Brandon Easton and Fico Osio reintroduce the world to the master escape artist Mr. Miracle, who while appears to be in control of his life is far from it as Shiloh Norman finds his personal life upended by a woman he falls for and a mysterious being outing all his secrets. Brandon Easton masterfully reopens Shiloh Norman's story in an extremely topical manner, setting itself apart from past Mr. Miracle runs to become something really, really special. I thoroughly enjoyed the biting social commentary that Brandon skillfully ties into the identity of Mr. Miracle, and Shiloh bringing up the fact that had his identity been revealed, or should be revealed, as is an actual plot point in the issue, people would hate him. The reason being is that he's a black man, and how when he is Mr. Miracle with the mask on and the showmanship, none of that matters and he's finally free of society's restraints on him. It's done so damn well and you can't help but feel a little sorry for the character because of this. Easton doesn't forget Mr. Miracle's main shtick either and we get some awesome stunts and escapes on top of some really great people moments from Shiloh himself who hasn't really had a social life thanks to his life as Mr. Miracle, so he's unsure on how to be around people and talk to them and what the whole deal is, which leads to some really great drama in his love life. It's all presented in a really well done way by Mr. Easton and in a real way as well and I'm looking forward to seeing Shiloh's story continue throughout this series. Fico Osio joins the book and oh man was his work just top notch. Every page he did was just a marvel to look at, none more so than Miracle's stunt scenes at the beginning of the book and the little bit of action we got at the end of the book. It was just filled with all this great detail and beautifully rendered backgrounds that made every page just a treasure to look at. Mr. Miracle, The Source of Freedom Issue 1 was an amazing first issue expanding Shiloh Norman's story, expertly setting out how he is different from the other Mr. Miracles in many, many ways, but also the same in a lot of ways, with some fantastic social commentary, romance, drama, and action. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Mr. Miracle, The Source of Freedom Issue 1 finds Shiloh Norman strapped to the outside of a rocket that finally reaches the Kármán line above Earth, where he will attempt his latest death-defying escape and space jump. The pay-per-view cameras continue streaming as Shiloh contacts his ground team, ready to uncouple himself. He disengages the safeties and plummets towards Earth, still chained up. Stream continues to follow his descent, knowing if Mr. Miracle doesn't free himself from the chains, he will hit the Earth at Mark 1.25. The ground team makes sure all video and radio communication is maintained with Shiloh, getting ready to trigger his backup shoot if he reaches 10,000 feet. Miracle reports he's falling fast, finding it hard to breathe but he's having the time of his life. Motherbox wants to cue up a dirty dancing soundtrack but Shiloh tells him not to, which the device thinks is probably a good idea seeing as it would probably be distracting. Motherbox tells him that there's 90 seconds left and he'll need to deploy his shoot as the team begin to worry he won't make it. The stream reports that Mr. Miracle hasn't deployed his shoot yet as the fireball that was once Mr. Miracle heads right for the ground control truck. There is a huge explosion as the people around the world are brought to the edge of their seats, only to see Mr. Miracle is totally fine, sitting on the roof of the truck, sipping a soda, wondering if anything miraculous has happened lately. Shiloh was soon met by his manager Vito, who says that the pay-per-view numbers are through the roof and he was number one trending for at least three hours on all major social media platforms. Shiloh thanks the man but knows that this is what they planned to happen, wondering what the bad news the man hinted at last week was. Vito tells him to come into the trailer to talk as somewhere else an angered man says that Mr. Miracle possesses one of the most powerful devices in the universe and he's using it to entertain monkeys. The man smashes his monitors, finding Mr. Miracle disgusting. In his trailer, Shiloh learns from his manager that the brand recognition is dipping in some key demographics and consumers are less excited about his brand. Shiloh had hoped that the Suicide Slum action figure line would work, but Vito says that, that there are two options now. He can do more heroic stuff around Metropolis, but Shiloh asks what the other option is, but his manager tries to change the subject. 
Shiloh wants to hear it, so the man says that he unmasks himself and goes public. Shiloh knows that that's not a good idea at all, since his anonymity is a selling point, and the mystery behind him carries most of the work. Vito, however, knows that he doesn't want anyone to know that Mr. Miracle is African American. Shiloh puts his mask back on, saying that he's not ashamed of who he is or what he stands for, and Thaddeus Brown suffered tremendously when he was exposed. The man says that he doesn't know what it's like for him, knowing the identity can be a prison sometimes. Times. Shiloh leaves his manager to continue talking himself into a hole, heading out to Metropolis, but says he's right about one thing, he can pretend to know what it's like being a black guy in this world. As he leaves the meeting, the mother box can sense that Shiloh's stress levels are up, having recorded his meeting in case he wanted to review it later, but Shiloh tells him to erase it, wanting mother box to upload the recent unsolved property crimes from Metropolis's police database, wanting to tackle the 344 cases. Two days later, Mr. Miracle tracks down the serial arsonist, confronting the man as he sets another one of his bombs. The man is scared so much that he activates the 10 second timer on the device, running from the building as Shiloh grabs it, wanting MB to activate a concussive absorption field around it. Motherbox, however, suffers a failure, saying that it cannot proceed. With no other choice, Shiloh races after the man, grabbing him and flying from the building as it explodes, causing them to slam into the car below. Motherbox apologizes for the disruption and it's fortunate that his suit is reinforced. Shiloh says that it's still hurt as MB scans the building, finding that it won't be collapsing this time, and he also finds that there are multiple squatters inside. The police arrive as Mr. Miracle goes to help the people, meeting with an arriving firefighter who thanks him for getting the arsonist off the streets. The firefighter removes her helmet and MB says that Shiloh's heart rate spiked. Shiloh tells it to shut up as he introduces himself, learning the woman's name is Denise Dorian. As she leaves to continue her job, Shiloh contacts Vito, wanting him to get in contact with Denise from the fire department, wanting to set up the typical NDA protocols since it's time he got his personal life in order. Later at the Metropolis Fire Department in Suicide Slums, Vito comes by to see Denise, giving her an NDA contract because the hero wants to take her out on a date. The man says that potential entanglements all need to sign an NDA for everyone's protection, something that's common in Hollywood. Denise says that this isn't Hollywood, knowing that she would never date a hero, but she knows that this presents a unique challenge. Vito, however, warns her that if she is to reveal his identity, she will be sued out of existence. Denise signs as the next day, Mr. Miracle has an interview with Marjorie Winters on Good Morning Metropolis. The woman is impressed with all his stunts, asking if he would like some of the champagne she had flown in, but the hero says that he doesn't drink while he works. Marjorie turns talk over to her weekly social media summit, where fans interact with Shiloh in real time through his social media accounts. Someone, however, in the feed claims Mr. Miracle is a liar and stealing his act, prompting the show to go on break, as later, Vito says that a remove the mask hashtag is outpacing Miracle's media impressions. Shiloh asks where this is all coming from, but his manager reminds him that he can just take off his mask since he isn't Thaddeus Brown and this isn't 1969, but Shiloh knows it sure feels like it, bringing up the various hate crime news stories and protests currently going on around the country. Remembering how when he was little he would listen to his elders talk about hardcore bigotry and mistreatment and how they had faith that the white people would do the right thing finally, but it never happened and he guesses that he was infected with his ancestors naivete since he believed their injustices on their people would stop but if anything the hatred has intensified as of late he tells Vito that he saved countless lives and danced at the edge of earth's atmosphere and controls a mother box but yet whenever a white woman sees him on the street even in broad daylight surrounded by people they clutch their purse a little bit tighter as if he's some mindless savage Shiloh knows it's not 1969 it's 2020 and they are stuck with Jim Crow. But none of that matters now when he's Mr. Miracle, since when he wears the costume, it's the only time he feels free. Vito apologizes, telling Shiloh on the bright side, he's updated his schedule with a date with Denise, wishing him luck and reminding him just to relax. Shiloh goes to meet the woman, who is shocked that he looks so normal. Shiloh is taken back by the comment, but Denise reassures him it's not a slur, calling him quite handsome. Shiloh thought that she expected Solomon Grundy, but Denise says that she's more of a Swamp Thing type of girl. She asks if she can go for a walk, since she wants to ask him some questions that might violate his NDA, 
learning Shiloh's name finally. As they walk, Denise notes how he's rather skittish around women, but Shiloh knows it's easier to impress people in the costume. She thinks that there has to be more to Shiloh Norman than the costume, so Shiloh wants to spend the day finding that out. Over the whole day, Shiloh talks about how what he's achieved in his life, but notices Denise's focus is elsewhere. The woman says that she doesn't find any of that interesting, but Shiloh says that he was just sharing his dreams and that he's achieved them, saying for a firefighter, she's quite boring. Denise angrily leaves, saying that the biggest illusion is that Shiloh Norman is someone worth knowing. Shiloh wants to make it up to her, but she says that she'll consider it when there's something worth talking about. Soon Shiloh gets a call, learning the bank is foreclosing on his condo since his finances are pending a fraud investigation, and they claim that his mortgage payments are from laundered accounts. Shiloh finds this all absurd, knowing that Vito is meant to be protecting him from this nonsense. Motherbox soon detects an energy surge as Shiloh is attacked by some type of energy blast which looks like boom tubes. Shiloh heads home, only to find his apartment has been ransacked and completely trashed with spray paint saying that he is a liar. Motherbox says that they are reading more energy surges as he's attacked again, this time confronted by a being called Never Free, who says that they are the true inheritor of Mr. Miracle as they are the only child of Big Barter and Scott Free, and they are there to wipe Shiloh Norman from the universe. 